Oh man, a Bob Ross shirt. Looking like, he be looking like a snack. <laughs> What's up thrill seekers? So today I have for you guys um, another top um, whatever video. Um, this one is going to be top nine roller coasters at Six Flags um, uh, St. Louis. I almost said New England. Saint, uh, Six Flags St. Louis. So if you haven't seen the vlog that I did at Six Flags St. Louis, go check it out. It'll just be right there in the corner, right there. Hi card. Anyways, go click that. Um, I would suggest you watch that before watching this. Um, it's, in my opinion, a pretty funny vlog and I have a lot of POVs and everything in it, so definitely suggest you checking it out. But if you also haven't seen another video, if you haven't seen the Fiesta Texas Top 10, I'll also link that right there in the corner. Um, go check that out. I did a top 10 at Six Flags Fiesta Texas with Colton um, and basically it's going to be a similar style video um, except of course I don't have another person here to kind of argue with me so it might be a little bit of a shorter video but without further ado let's get right into the top nine. So starting us off at number nine is Ninja. So Ninja um, the reason why it is so low is because it hurts. Um, the, at least the last time I wrote it, um, the loop, the first loop was pretty, pretty smooth. And then we went into an Immelman, which uh, happens right after the loop. And I banged my head a lot going through that and then really throughout the rest of the ride. It's not absolutely awful, but it is definitely one of, it's probably in the top 10 worst coasters I've ridden, um, but it's, it's definitely rough and it's not really enjoyable. Of course, get it for the credit. It's not one of those rides where I'm like, it's so bad, don't even get it for the credit. Um, but definitely get it for the credit and then I would suggest not riding it again. Um, because it does, um, at least in my case, cause me um, head pain. So, yeah. Number eight is Mine Train. It is the only kid-oriented roller coaster in the park, and it's honestly pretty intense for a Mine Train. Um, at the end, there is like a little bit of a drop. Um, it goes into a tunnel, and it does a little bit of a drop um, and it's actually a little bit higher than what most mine trains are. So overall, it's pretty intense for a mine train. So I would suggest, of course, getting it for the credit. And it's not one of those rides where it's going to be super boring. It, um, most likely, you'll actually enjoy riding it. So yeah, that's, that's mine train. It's not amazing, but it's pretty fun. Now number seven is Boomerang. So Boomerang is, I don't know, it's a, it's a Boomerang. Um, the footage that you're seeing is going to be from Fiesta Texas's Boomerang, just because I didn't actually ride Boomerang the last time that I went to Six Flags St. Louis because I had done it earlier, so there was no point in riding it again. But overall, from what I remember, it's just a standard boomerang. Nothing too different or anything like that. Uh, the setting around it isn't great, which is why it's honestly below Fiesta Texas boomerang because on that boomerang, you know, you can see the midway and you can see a whole bunch of different things versus um, this one at Six Flags St. Louis. It's just kind of on a hillside, kind of tucked away in the back corner of the park. So it's not the prettiest thing, but overall it's, I don't know, it's just a boomerang. It's not super awesome and it's not terrible, so eh. And then number six. Number six is Pandemonium. Um, it is another Pandemonium clone. And in my opinion, since the last video that I did with Colton, um, 
I actually have moved all of the boomerangs below the pandemoniums. Not too much, but I definitely think that pandemonium is a little bit more fun, especially with my preferences. I love airtime and boomerang gives absolutely zero, none, like no airtime at all. But pandemonium does give a little bit, especially towards the end of the ride. So overall, it's actually a super fun ride, super great for families and kids, um, and also great for adults. Um, and yeah, overall, so it's a great, great family coaster. Then at number five, number five, in my opinion, is Batman the Ride. So Batman the Ride, at least this one is, it's, I mean, kind of average. Um, all Batman the Rides are similar. The only difference really is just how smooth they are. Um, since going to uh, Six Flags St. Louis, I actually got a chance to ride um, Six Flags Fiesta Texas um, Batman the Ride clone, which is Goliath. And I thought Goliath was crazy awesomely smooth versus um, St. Louis's, which definitely has a B&M rattle, and I actually found myself bang my head once or twice. Nothing that actually hurt. It was kind of just like, ah, uh, trying not to, um, that, you know, stiffening your neck and stuff, where I was kind of more focused on that than actually enjoying the ride, which took away from it a little bit. Um, but overall, it's not a bad ride. I would I think it's a pretty good ride. Um, we rode it twice and I'm happy with that. It's definitely re-rideable, but I don't think I could marathon it per se. Um, so overall, pretty average ride, nothing spectacular, but it's definitely a good ride. All right, um, number four is The Boss. This coaster has been famous for being insanely rough. I do have to say those, um, those people who tell you that it is rough are telling the truth. It's definitely, definitely a rough ride, but it's not a bad ride because of it, um, at least in my opinion. I would say, pan or sorry, not Pandemonium, the boss is pretty, it's a pretty good ride. It has a lot of airtime, so if you love airtime, then the, the boss has a lot of it. Um, it actually doesn't have a seat belt, so the only thing is the lap bar, which is super awesome because you can get even more airtime out of the hills. Um, and it is super fast, and especially for a wooden coaster, and super fun. So definitely suggest riding the boss at least a couple times. Um, I wouldn't say I could marathon it just because after riding it, you kind of need at least a five to 10 minute break. Um, and that could just be spent walking to another ride um, just because of how rough it is. But I would say it takes away from the ride a little bit, but not too, too much um, for me. So yeah, that's, that's the boss. And then getting into my top three, all three of these coasters, could really be switched around and I know that a lot of people switch them around a lot um, especially one of these that is very unpopular um, <laughs> it's a very unpopular opinion on where I place placed this coaster um, but all of these top three are in my top 15 um, number three is number 15 um, and then the others are kind of scattered in there. I think um, the number one coaster at this at Six Flags um, St. Louis is my number nine, I'm pretty sure right now. So yeah, but starting it off with the number three, it is Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast. I love this ride. Um, I have no problem with them cloning it. Um, of course, there are only two clones, but in reality, I do wish there were more. It's such a fun ride. Um, just getting launched backwards is a super unique experience that you can't really find on many other coasters. 
Um, so it's just, it's super, super fun to be launched backwards. And then of course going up the inverted top hat, especially on the first way around um, and kind of in the back row, um, backish. That's where I prefer to sit because you go higher up on the spike. Um, but in the back row-ish, you definitely get a lot of air time after going over the inverted top hat um, and then of course around the cool turnaround and the spike is so awesome. You get amazing views of the whole park, um, which is super, super awesome and it just feels like you're uh, climbing higher and higher and higher. Of course, you do have a little bit of some magnets propelling you up even farther um, on the spike, which I think is an amazing um, kind of touch on the ride. Of course, I know that they kind of have to do it in order for it to make it all around nice and smoothly, um, but it does really add to it because you just keep going up and up and up and it feels like you're um, never stopping. And then the dive down again gives some more awesome air time. So yeah, I, I love Mr. Freeze. Number two is my unpopular opinion. Um, it is Screaming Eagle. What? So lots of people don't really give this ride much, um, like not many people talk about this ride a lot just because it's kind of an older um, wooden coaster. So it's not really, most people think it's not anything spectacular. I would have to disagree entirely. I would say that this and American Thunder, which is my number one, which I'll talk about in a second, I think these could be flip-flopped, um, to be completely honest. Of course, um, I said American Eagle, or sorry, Screaming Eagle, I keep, keep saying that, I said that in the vlog too. Screaming Eagle, I think is my number 13 roller coaster right now, maybe even higher than that. It is awesome, especially with my preferences. Um, if you know anything about my preferences, then you would know that I love floater airtime more than I like ejector airtime. That's why I was a little bit disappointed with um, Wicked Cyclone because I keep hearing from other people like, oh, it's an amazing ride, it's super awesome, right? And I kind of forgot that I prefer floater versus ejector, and of course RMCs are all ejector, with the exception of a couple, um, which are, um, of course, Iron Rattler with the crazy drop and the crazy drop off the quarry, and also Twisted Timbers. It has um, the three back-to-back -back airtime hills and all of that stuff. But um, yeah, I just love floater airtime, and that is why I love Screaming Eagle, because it really gives you that stomach feeling, you know, like the falling feeling in your stomach um, that I absolutely love on a roller coaster. It's my favorite thing. Um, one of my favorite feelings. So yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it's a great coaster and it's definitely, definitely underrated um, and not talked about enough. So I would just don't overhype it because some people don't like it, but in my opinion, it's an awesome ride. And finally, number one, my number one roller coaster at Six Flags St. Louis is, I already said, American Thunder. Um, American Thunder is awesome. It has pretty much the same amount of airtime as Screaming Eagle, in my opinion, um, with the floater moments. The drop is great, um, especially the last, like the last bunny hills going into the break run are super awesome. And I love the twister layout. It really adds to like like a whippiness to it, I guess, um, when you're kind of just going around the hills and kind of turning and kind of flying out of your seat. Um, it's super, super awesome. Um, definitely the best ride in the park, but then again, Screaming Eagle and American Thunder could switch places. Um, I just like American Thunder more 
because um, it, of the kind of more intensity of it. Um, that's kind of what makes it um, just a little bit of an edge for me. So yeah, but really that's it. That's my top nine roller coasters at Six Flags St. Louis. I know that the title says top 10. Honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. I did that because a lot of people search top 10 roller coasters and I want my video to pop up on the search bar. So uh, that's why it says top 10, even though it's really a top nine. Um, but yeah, so that that's my list. Um, it's super super great park um, with a great top three and I definitely do suggest going there. It's an underrated park in my opinion. Um, so yeah, that's really gonna be it for this video. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, definitely smash the thumbs up button um, and comment down your thoughts on my list. Um, if you have any disagreements with it, then I will be getting back to you um, and kind of explaining more in depth why I think that. Um, or you could just roast my list in the comments, whatever. I honestly don't care. Um, anyways, yeah, that's gonna be it. And as always, peace. Be looking like a snack. <laughs> <laughs>